Hey guys, this is Jacob with Cow Fishing Company. Today I'm going to be tying a Bob Popovic style hollow fly with a shad profile, which is, I'm sure there's a video out there of it, but I'm doing it a little bit different um, than some of the videos that at least I've seen. I'm sure there's one out there that's like this. Um, so Gamakatsu beats an S stinger hook, 3-0, 2-0, or SL12S, 2-0, 1-0. I like a little bit heavier of a gauge wire hook um, just because I'm fishing, you know, intermediate sinking lines, whatever. You want that fly to fish immediately and bucktail is a little bit buoyant. So that, that heavier gauge wire offsets that buoyancy a little bit, lets that thing get down as soon as it hits the water, you can start fishing it. Um, gel spun, Vivis 150. You can also use ultra thread in the heavier sizes um you just want a strong thread that you can lay flat and then cord up if you want to um i'm using bucktail it's pretty much all this fly is, is bucktail and flash um really good hollow tying bucktail is a little bit different it's really soft it's really um uh, gonna be what i would consider to be crinkly i guess if you're looking for a good hollow tying bucktail after this video or just in general, we have some. Nature Spirit is our supplier for that. Um, we have it on our online store. If you need hollow tying bucktail, specify in the notes when you check out. We'll make sure that you get what you need. Um, we're also running, I think, 20% off our apparel on there too, which if you need tying materials and want a t-shirt or something, that's a good way to do it. So I'm going to cut off my first clump here. The tail length sets your whole profile of your fly here. So I make this part a little bit longer than I do anything else on this whole fly. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to cord my thread up by twisting my bobbin counterclockwise. I'm going to take a couple loose wraps and then tighten down on it. Make sure you cover this thing up. This is where your tail fibers will come out of this fly before anything else will. I'm using Polar Flash, Opal. You can use Pearl or Opal um, Flashaboo too. Tie that in 60-40. If you don't have really long bucktail, you can also set your tail length with your flash if you want to. Um, as you can see, I tied it in a little bit long. So now we're going to take some more bucktail and as I go up the shank, I'm actually going to use shorter and shorter bucktail. I'm pretty sparse on this too. I'm not like putting a load of material on here because as we said, bucktail is a little bit more buoyant. So you don't want a ton of tail on here or else this thing's just going to float, especially on a floating or an intermediate line. So cord your thread. This clump's getting tied in reverse. It's a little bit shorter than my tail. And then once I've got that tied in with some loose wraps, I'm actually gonna just take my thumb and my index finger and kind of walk them around. If you have a rotary vise, this is a really good time to use it. Kind of see where all that material's sitting. Um, so, to get that shad profile instead of a round mullet style profile, this is really important. I'm gonna take my index and my thumb before I crank down on this thread, and I'm gonna squeeze both sides of the hook really, really hard. I don't know if you can see in the video how hard I'm pulling on this, but I'm, I'm squeezing and pulling pretty hard. Um, so squeeze, pull straight down. You'll see that stuff flare out a little bit. And then Push this stuff back. And we're gonna do the same thing. What I'm doing here is I'm building a thread dam up in front of this stuff. Um, this is how you set your profile. Your taper comes from this thread dam because what this thread dam is doing is it's actually pushing those fibers back. And if you have a narrow or a heavy thread dam rather, it's gonna come out narrow. If you have a pretty small thread dam it's going to be wide so i start here 
each clump gets progressively wider and that's how you get that good teardrop shape that I'm looking for. Um, and you can use your thumb and index and just kind of roll this bucktail on your fingers as you go. That way you can kind of see that profile take shape. If you've got really good bucktail, you'll see it um, as soon as you start rolling this stuff. I'm gonna fast forward through because the rest of this fly is pretty much the same thing until I get to the next part. So here's where I'm going to start doing the two-tone part of it. Um, with that, I've got two tails here. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use less material than I have been. So I've been putting it on a little bit thicker. Uh, so when you do this part of it, the two-tone at least, the trick is to do the exact same thing that we've been doing, tied in reverse. But instead of rotating that fiber around the whole shank, um, I'm actually just going to go ahead and squeeze the top and pull straight down. And then you do the same thing on the bottom. Um, that gives a little bit of rotation there. It covers the shank. You still got a 3D profile. It's not flat like a deceiver. But it stands straight up. I'm going to do that on both parts. Whip finish and you're done. Now this isn't like the this isn't the profile I'm looking for quite yet. But what we're gonna end up doing, I don't want to crowd that eye, um, is we're gonna rinse this under the sink. And what I mean by that is you're gonna take a the what the best way to do it in my opinion, um, or the way that I do it rather, take a paper clip, stick it through the eye rinse that thing under the sink, and then hang it vertically. It's good in the vise, you just can't get it perfectly vertically a lot of the time. But if you put it on a paper clip, it's gonna, gravity's gonna do its thing. It's gonna dangle like you want it to. But you can see how narrow it is this way, but it's tall, which is that profile I'm looking for in a shad. Um, if you want a mullet profile, and don't squeeze the sides. That's all there is to it, though. All right, thanks guys. And if you're looking for any of these materials, um, you can call us at the shop. We're closed in Blue Ridge right now, but we're still taking phone calls. You can call us here at the Blue Ridge number. That's 706-946-3044. Check out the online store like we've said before, or um, shoot myself or Connor an email. That's J-M-I-L-H-O-L-L-A-N-D at cahutafishingco.com or C-J-O-N-E-S at cutfishingco.com. Thanks.